When I first started filming cars, I used to hang out of a window to film rollers, and at the time, it made perfect sense. But as I got better at filming, hanging out of the window was... well, to be honest? So about a year ago, I built a rig that would help me film rollers, and it was a huge success. I could even film rollers without anyone's help. It was great on flat roads, but when things got bumpy, it wasn't so good. So this year, I decided to fix that. All right, check it out. We got the rig pretty much finished. Essentially, the front part is the same. This is new and this is new. I got it on this clamp system that allows me to change the height to whatever I want and I can swivel it to this side of the car or the other side of the car. Okay, so finally finished the new roller rig version two and here it is. It's honestly really, really compact. It's a lot lighter than the previous version. And for 75 bucks of just random scrapyard material that I welded together, it was pretty good. It runs on the same principle of the isolator design I had in version one. So it's essentially absorbing all the left and right turning and like any weird uh, G forces from, you know, turning hard and whatnot. Shortened up the cables and went less cables. But this time it's got a spring arm that absorbs a lot of the up and down movement. So hopefully going over bumps and stuff should be a lot better, a lot smoother. I did some testing and uh, to my surprise, it's honestly really, really good for 75 bucks. Not gonna complain. It's honestly probably one of the cooler things I built. And it's all in the name of, you know, filming cars as one person. Cause not all the time I can grab a friend. Hey, you know, let's go film a car together. I built this with me being, you know, a solo shooter in mind. And so it came out pretty good. So I'm gonna walk you around the rig real quick. Pretty much same as last time. Um, obviously the plate is the same, same style of uh, cables and elastic tubes to give this some vibration dampening. 3D printed part right here that matches the contour of the DJI RSC2 handle. So I'm not worried about, I'm honestly not worried about this thing falling apart, mainly because if you look at the handles right here, they have a contour right here and a contour right here. So this thing is not gonna slide back and forth and it's not gonna rotate either. This is the new part of the rig. This is the spring arm. And the spring arm essentially 
does a majority of the dampening work. Um, I really had to play around with the spring. Honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm not an engineer. So I ended up buying two different springs, and the second spring that I used was a little bit skinnier in diameter and much longer. So I ended up cutting it short by about an inch, and it ended up working pretty well. The whole point was to have this arm completely level uh, with the camera and the weight on it. Obviously, since I changed the lens, it's going to be a little higher because it's a lighter setup, but it still does the job pretty darn well. Here on the back side, we have the two clamps that it runs on. These are just uh, some random two inch um, clamps that I found on Amazon. These are like uh, for lighting setups for studios and whatnot, and they work pretty well on this two inch scrapyard sprinkler pipe. So what's cool about this is that I can loosen these two and I can move the entire camera up and down on that pole, which I might as well demonstrate to you guys. Yeah, so the whole point of this design was for it to be really modular and really flexible in terms of like shooting, you know, because if you shoot on a road that's only two lanes, you gotta be able to, you know, swing out pretty far to get the, the whole back of the car or maybe even the front. But so far, it's been a pretty wild rig. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. I know it's not really typical of me to do a uh, build breakdown like this, but a lot of people were asking when I posted the video on Instagram, so I figured I might as well do it. Again, it's not a tutorial, but it's more of a how I built this setup and how simple the concept of this kind of stabilizer arm really is.